name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome everyone as we join together as St. Genevieve family this morning. As we come together on this beautiful fall morning, we're reminded of the gift of the civilization of love that God desires for each one of us. We hear today in our gospel how there was division among the apostles, and Jesus calls them to the gift of unity, kindness, and understanding for one another. Let us continue to remind ourselves in our hearts to always be open to one another in the gift of love and relationship as we prepare our hearts to call to mind our sins and be prepared for these sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish for me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in our Gospel, we hear once again the story of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, as they're traveling with Jesus, and they ask him if we, they can sit at his right and at his left. And since in another one of the Gospels, we heard the same story as their mother asked Jesus on their behalf if James and John could have places of pride in his kingdom. So once again, we see that the apostles are very mistaken in their conception of the kingdom that Jesus Christ is bringing. They still have in mind that Old Testament model of King David and King Solomon and a physical, material, earthly kingdom. The Jewish people in the lifetime of Jesus have been oppressed for many years by the Romans. And so even though Jesus is walking through the streets of Judea and Galilee and Samaria and healing people with miracles, feeding the 5,000, performing so many miracles of charity to the poor and to the marginalized, showing them a clear example of who the true Messiah is. For some reason, the apostles still are holding on to that idea that there will be a change of events and that Jesus will all of a sudden become a military king and will overthrow Rome. And once again, they will have a new temple of David and a new King Solomon and a new King David, in a sense, a new Jerusalem that will have temporal and earthly power over the Romans and the known world at that time. So James and John want to be the uppermost in that new kind of earthly kingdom that they are envisioning for Jesus. But yet Jesus, time and time again, tries to teach them and reveal to them the true kingdom of charity and love that he brings forth. That the first shall be last, and that the last shall be first. Jesus embodied his servant leader style when he came, and the apostles expected to wash his feet and his hands, yet he placed an apron around his waist and washed their feet, showing that even though he was their rabbi and their teacher, that he was the first among them as servants and a slave of all, as he said in our readings today. In my travels as a priest, 
as we at times have the opportunity for pilgrimage, the place that I've most seen the kingdom of God was in Kingston, Jamaica, going once with one of our local church parishes to visit the Missionaries of Hope, led by a beautiful priest by the name of Father Richard Holong. Father Richard was an academic. He even taught for a time in the University of Boston here in the U.S. But his heart was continually drawn to the poor back in his homeland of Jamaica in the inner city of their capital, Kingston. So he went kind of in the style of Mother Teresa and slowly over many years built a following that now carries over 500 brothers in Jamaica, Haiti, India, Africa, the Philippines, Indonesia, and the United States. They have homes where they serve the poor. Where I was able to go in Kingston, I saw seven different homes. One was an orphanage for crippled children. Another was a home for men with AIDS. Yet another was a home for handicapped adults. I had been on other mission trips back in high school and college and, and as a priest in seminary, but no mission trip like this in Jamaica with the missionaries of the poor. I had been in Mexico and other places where we went to the poor and we brought them material goods. But this trip in Jamaica with the missionaries, we actually were able to, to feed people who are not able to feed themselves. We're able to assist in washing people who are not able to wash themselves. In a very hands-on way, we're able to serve the poor. It was a life-changing experience for many of us. Many of the young people I was with, high school students and young adults, lives are forever changed by that trip, that missionary trip to Kingston with the missionaries of the poor. The way that they served the marginalized, those who were left on the streets with no one else to care for them, the missionaries of the poor, as does Mother Teresa with her missionaries of charity, at least in my personal opinion, just really embodied more than anywhere as I've ever been in the world, the true kingdom of God, this true kingdom of love, this true kingdom that none are forgotten, that none are marginalized, that all are included. And this is the kingdom of God that we're called to establish in our local communities and our homes. And at times, we see division in our communities. If we were to play out the story a little bit, kind of imagine it a little bit more in our gospel today, notice that it said, the ten became indignant of James and John. Can you imagine that in your group of friends or in your workplace of two people were just to go talk to their boss or their superior and say, you know, hire me, promote me, place me in charge of everyone else. In fact, Jesus had already told Peter that I give you the keys. Jesus had already placed Peter in charge of the 12. But here James and John are trying to leapfrog Peter and to be in charge of the 12. You can imagine that the other apostles were quite upset. But yet Jesus once again teaches them that servant leader model. He says to James and John, you will have positions of pride and leadership, but not in the way that they think. It'll be through the cross, through the chalice of martyrdom, that chalice that we're all called to mysteriously in different ways in our lives to carry our own daily crosses. And my dear brothers and sisters, the way that we carry the cross is through the gift of the rosary. This month we celebrate the month of Mary in October and the month of the Rosary. My baptismal date's October 7th, the feast day of Our Lady of the Rosary. The Rosary is a sure and certain way to carry our daily crosses. In a sense, the Rosary for me has been a special gift also for praying for unity. As we saw in our apostles today, a little division beginning to build up in them, a little friction. Perhaps at times, and post-Hurricane Ida and some of the challenges that has brought in our recovery, maybe at times we build a little friction in our families. We ask the gift of the rosary that we can bring some of those daily crosses before the Lord, that he may alleviate a little bit of those crosses and make them a little bit 
more simple. The apostles today eventually will learn through the leadership of the Blessed Mother the gift of service and the gift of praying for one another and the gift of unity. I can just imagine in the upper room after Jesus had died, as they were afraid of the Romans, that the Blessed Mother was with the Twelve in that upper room, and that she was a cornerstone for them, a centering point for their calmness and their peace, as they were afraid of what would happen after Jesus had been crucified. And our Blessed Mother is with us today, in our churches, in our communities, and in our families, to once again be that center point, that place of peace, of reassurance, let us pray the family rosary. We are welcome every night during the month of October at 7.30 p.m. We offer the rosary on Facebook Live here at St. Genevieve. We are also welcome to, uh, to join us in a 33 consecration to St. Joseph. As we come to the conclusion of the year of St. Joseph, promulgated by Pope Francis, on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, we will consecrate to St. Joseph here at St. Genevieve. And you call our church office if you'd like to join a 33 day preparation. Let's continue to build a civilization of love, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us reach out to the poor and the marginalized. As young people, remember the gift of your friends at school. Remember not to exclude others when you join together for games and activities. Let us remember the words of Jesus, that the first will be the last, and the last shall be first. Let us remember the gift of humility. And lastly, in conclusion, my own personal experience, my own family life, as I have tried to build up that civilization of love, my own family, and to bring reconciliation at times where there may have been division. I find that when we pray the rosary, we learn how to ask God the right questions. You see, James and John asked the wrong question. They asked Jesus if they could be promoted amongst his band of followers. But yet when we pray the rosary, it humbles our hearts and opens our hearts to the gift of God's plan in our lives and the gift of true love. And when we pray the rosary for others, it opens their hearts too to the gift of God's plan in their lives and the gift of true faith. So let us be missionaries to our family and missionaries to our societies through the gift and patronage of our Blessed Mother and the Rosary and St. Joseph, that our hearts may be opened to a true civilization of love and charity, the love of God fused far and wide, that we may all stand as one people of God, united under the one banner of Christ Jesus. Together united under the one banner of love, which is Christ Jesus, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ the Lord came into the world to heal the sick and comfort the afflicted. Let us pray to him in humility, that the Lord will continue to lead us beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That as they do the exhausting and challenging work of caring for patients, especially during this pandemic, God will provide all of our medical and mental health professionals with the wisdom, strength, and courage to continue with their good work. We pray to the Lord. As Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, he healed every kind of illness. May he show his compassion and goodness to all. We pray to the Lord. He touched the sick and they were healed. By the gift of his grace, may he lift up the hearts of the afflicted who seek medical help. We pray to the Lord. May those who suffer from mental illness find relief from their distress through professionals who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord Fill all medical and mental health professionals with the gift of wisdom so that they may execute right judgment in the practice of their professions. We pray to the Lord. Lord Receive all these petitions and all the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask all these through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. It may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ, may make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance of their elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, with St. Genevieve, on whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. For this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Shelton Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look down on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy they should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
prayer of spiritual communion for those joining us on social media. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant our Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things may be helped by what you give in this present age, prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a couple announcements. I'd like to remind everyone that the mandate regarding the wearing of masks inside the church during Mass and other celebrations has not been relaxed and is still being implemented. We continue to live stream the recitation of the Rosary every night at 7.30 p.m. on our Facebook page. We would also like to invite anyone who would be interested in leading one of these nights to please call the office. As our way of celebrating the closing of the year of St. Joseph here at St. Genevieve, we will be having a consecration night to St. Joseph on December 8th. This event will be preceded by 33 days of preparation, which you can do as an individual, as couples, as groups of friends, or as a family. The preparation days will begin on November 5th. Please call the church office if you would like to participate and check our Facebook page for updates. During this past year, our healthcare providers have been true heroes during the COVID-19 pandemic, going well past a year now. They have truly given themselves in the motto of the servant leadership of Jesus Christ and charity and love to those who are ill. And then that was even compounded more so by Hurricane Ida. So in our prayers of intercession today, we prayed for our healthcare providers and also like to offer a special blessing at this time for those who are here with us today. If there's anyone who in any way works in the healthcare industry, I invite you this time to please stand that I may offer you a special blessing. Lord our God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, your Son healed our infirmities and diseases. When he sent forth the disciples to preach the gospel, he commanded them to visit and heal the sick. Jesus also ministered to those with maladies of the heart. He gave words of comfort to the crowds, whom he perceived as being like sheep without a shepherd. He consoled the widow of Nain and the sisters of Lazarus over the deaths of their loved ones. By the grace of your Holy Spirit, sustained physicians, nurses, other medical and mental health professionals, in their practice of the art of healing wisely, that they may continue to serve those suffering from either physical or emotional illness with care. May you, O Lord, work through them to comfort and speed the recovery of their patients. Restore to health. May their patients and clients be moved to thank you joyfully for the favors they have received. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you. Amen. Special thank you to all of our health care providers who continue to help us during these days. I invite all to please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming the love of God by your lives. Thanks be to God. Everyone have a beautiful Sunday. Lord's Day of rest and enjoy the fall weather.
Thank you.